good afternoon to one and all i welcome you all to this exclusive session on kidney care talk show an initiative by integrated health and well being council powered by jb chemicals and pharmaceuticals i am dr asavri savant public health specialist with integrated health and well being council and in this live session we will dive deep into the topic of managing different types of kidney diseases so around the topic of kidney diseases according to the stats depicted by international society of nephrology in 2022 chronic kidney diseases affect 1 in 10 people worldwide it is estimated to be the fifth most cause of death by 2040 india has a huge disease burden with 17% of population having chronic kidney diseases and an estimated 5 lakh new people reach dialysis stage every year no country can afford such huge burden in one area and in one disease that is why there is a wide need to create awareness around this kidney diseases and how to avoid such diseases in your life so with, for the same discussion we have to address this issue and to create awareness around this we have uh, our expert uh, panelist here with us today dr sanjeev saxena dr saxena is md and dnb in nephrology he is the senior consultant of nephrology and kidney transplant medicine and is the chairman of the institute of renal sciences psri hospital uh dr sanjeev saxena we welcome you to the show sir thank you it's a pleasure to be with you uh so for the topic for today is managing different types of kidney disorders uh so let us start with the basics which is what are the main different types of kidney diseases that people are affected from and which ones are most commonly observed in india over to you sir yeah i think uh, i would go by the numbers that we see and therefore the top of the list will be patient developed kidney disease due to diabetes next would be patients who would have a combination of diabetes and high blood pressure so diabetic renal disease the commonest renal disease which is causing um patients to reach uh, dialysis and transplantation so this is number 1 then there are host of other diseases which i would say uh, come for uh, and numbers compared to diabetic nephropathy and these are many of these diseases what are called autoimmune diseases so there are a group of diseases which we label as chronic global or chronic interstitial nephritis i would say is that some immune dysfunction happens in your immune system and this dysfunction leads to your immune system believing that your own kidney is not yours and therefore it's a foreign body in the uh, system and therefore it, the immune system attacks the kidney and destroys the filters which are uh, cleaning the blood so to say so the kidneys get damaged and progressively they lose their function and these are two groups of drugs where two groups of diseases called chronic glomerular nephritis or chronic interstitial nephritis and this is the second set of diseases that uh, affect large uh, population of people who come with kidney disease then there are certain diseases which uh, are genetic so you know there is a disease called autosomal polycystic kidney disease so polycystic kidney disease is another disease which runs in families and causes uh, kidney dysfunction and most members of a family reach um, dialysis around the same age so the father if he gets into dialysis at 50 the son or the daughter will also reach dialysis stage by the age of 50 years 
then the other big problem which is coming and which is because of uh, which is indeed a self made problem is the kidney disease is due to over medication and in this i would also include the uh, substance abuse so if um, you are a drug, iv drug abuse abuser you are likely to develop uh, several kidney diseases which can uh, prove uh, fatal to you then over the counter uh, 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 pain medication as you know as you age and with the type of stressful life that uh, most uh, even young people are living these days especially those who are working on computers the whole day they tend to develop very severe uh, neck um, pains and you know stiffness and osteoarthritis of the neck leading to what is commonly known as spondylitis and uh, uh, both in the neck and in the back low back and they consume uh, they don't think second um, twice and they start taking painkiller so if you are on painkillers for a long period of time these are drugs which can damage your kidney another group which is emerging which is self inflicted injury is the use of high protein powders by Uh, you know, people who are going to gyms and you know, young boys who want to build a body like Salman Khan and all. So you know, they develop uh, uh, what is called hyperfiltration injury. Now, so much protein, the kidneys have to filter. You know, the proteins result in generation of urea, and the kidneys have to overwork. And the, some of these kidneys uh, tend to then go into problems, leading to kidney failure. So. these are self inflicted injuries and they can be the drug abuse the abuse or too much protein intake the painkiller use these are what i would say are totally preventable uh, diseases then besides this there are host of other diseases autoimmune diseases like sle rheumatoid arthritis some of them uh, lead to kidney diseases and then there are host of but suffice to say that these these are broadly the big groups that we tend to see in the order of frequency that i have uh, uh, told you thank you so much sir for highlighting all these and explaining it to our viewers there is another disease called ckds or chronic kidney diseases as depicted and i am sure all the viewers have come across this terminology a lot so can you please define for the viewers what this is and what all different disease why is it called chronic kidney disease specifically yeah you know first is to know there are two terms acute and chronic so anything which uh, you know chronic is a term not related to just medicine but in general you know you say this chap has been chronically troubling me you know which means that the uh, whatever is the problem is there for some time and for kidney diseases this is defined as 3 months so if you have any kidney disease which is lasting more than 3 months it is classified as chronic kidney disease which also has a connotation that chronic kidney diseases are not reversible right so that is important to understand that the word chronic comes in because the kidney disease has been there for some time and that time is 3 months and most of them are not reversible but with today's treatment and modern medicine at least there's uh, progress to end stage kidney disease or the final stage of kidney disease is uh, slowed down so and then you can live a good healthy life um, normal age uh, with the modern medication so that is what chronic means thank you so much sir so as you were earlier highlighting that there are some self inflicted kidney problems that you know uh, such as consuming excess protein powders because of you know gymming and all these different sort of lifestyles that are there so can you please also touch upon how alcohol and excess salt intake and having you know uncontrolled uh, lifestyle diseases such as uncontrolled diabetes and uncontrolled hypertension uh, are these also related to kidney health if so how 
yeah i think uh, out of this i would uh, you know the burning topic today is salt intake right so who has defined that they want uh, the salt intake to be 5 grams over uh, next 5 uh, 3 to 5 years for everybody as as indians we consume about um, 8 to 12 grams of salt in a day which is pretty high and uh, salt directly doesn't harm the kidney but indirectly it harms the kidney in the sense that it leads to high uh, water retention in the body which generates hypertension so if you have high blood pressure your blood pressure will worsen with the take a lot of salt and uh, people uh, think that they are eating less salt in the diet if their uh, uh, sabzi and dal is you know a little less salty but at the same time they forget they are taking chutneys achars papad and uh, sauces and burgers and pizzas all these are rich in uh, salt and results in high salt intake so as indians we got to all cut down on our salt intake so that is what i would say would be my take on salt for diabetics i think uh, good sugar control is the bottom line and good sugar control not when kidney disease starts but before kidney disease actually happens and therefore good sugar control and most diabetics are also having high blood pressure so they must also control the blood pressure excellently and for diabetics since uh, this is for the common man there is a thing called hba1c which tells you how has been your sugar control for last 3 months and you should target anything between 6.5 and 7 okay. more than 7 uh, is not uh, good sugar control so you must control your sugars pretty well the other thing is good blood pressure control so what is good blood pressure control today we believe 120 80 is the good blood pressure control for everybody the myth that you know as you age your blood pressure goes up is not um, uh, no more valid so you must target normal blood pressure in all patients uh, first by lifestyle maybe salt uh, restriction and then if need be add medication so diabetes hypertension and then salt intake these are uh, some of the things that uh, one can easily control and uh, Uh, prevent kidney disease actually from happening at all thank you so much sir for giving out such many uh, you know tips and measures that people need to adopt to keep their kidneys healthy uh, but most of the people often presume that once you get any sort of kidney disease the only treatment for kidney disease is to get dialysis so can you please explain how, what are the different you know um uh, management methods for different uh, kidney diseases that are there in india yeah i took to agree with you you know in disease he thinks that uh, you know soon he will reach dialysis and that is the end of the road whereas it is just uh, a myth only you know now there are uh, besides medication we are more clear on as to uh, what is the uh, road map for management of uh, kidney disease patients and therefore even if you have a kidney disease there is a certain group of benefit by just having maintaining good body weight which means that you must uh, walk 40 minutes a day you must uh, have a balanced diet no not too much of uh, proteins if you are a vegetarian that and if you have a kidney disease being vegetarian helps you much more than consuming uh, non vegetarian then if you are smoker or alcoholic please refrain from that both are uh, Uh, so called uh, kidney toxic uh, things so if you have a kidney disease and you continue to smoke your kidney disease will progress very fast so these are lifestyle changes that you must do and that also includes less salt in your diet then your doctor will tell you whether you need to restrict your liquid intake or not then if you have followed all this your kidney disease progression will be slowed down but then there are your doctor will add a lot of other uh, things 
besides diet and uh, lifestyle he would add uh, a group of drugs which are commonly known as ace inhibitors or arbs you know if you are early in kidney disease these uh, medicines uh, slow the progress of your kidney disease then there is another drug now which are called the sglt2 inhibitors these are medication which were essentially designed for the management of diabetes but it was found that these are very good for the uh, patients with heart failure and for patients with kidney disease so that was the um, flip benefit and soon it emerged that they should be given to patients with kidney disease for diabetic kidney disease and for even non diabetic kidney disease right now there is another medicine called the mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists right so the suffice it to say that there are a lot of drugs which are new and which are now freely available not at all costly and they will slow the march of your kidney disease towards dialysis so if you are say 40 years old and you start having your diabetic uh, uh, kidney disease previously they would all go into dialysis in one and a half years but that's no more true now that they live long and very productive life and furthermore treatment of uh, anemia in kidney disease has improved tremendously from injections now you have tablets which will call, correct your um, anemia then the management of diabetes has undergone a sea change there are now excellent medicines for control of diabetes and hypertension so your doctor will prescribe you uh, medicines which will slow your progress of kidney disease and so therefore don't lose heart number 2 should you still reach dialysis stage dialysis is no not the end of the road that you must remember patients on dialysis do very well and they live for 10 15 20 years on dialysis and they are reasonably product then there is an option of transplant except for patients who are not fit for transplant medically or don't have a related donor then they continue on dialysis but otherwise transplant is a much better option giving you good better quality life thank you so much sir for highlighting all these different uh, management methods uh, medical management as well as surgical man management methods so you highlighted that a transplant is good for people and is a good option except for those who are not fit for transplant so can you please explain us who would be those people who won't be fit for transplants yes you know transplant is a surgery after all and it's a reasonably uh, big surgery and then uh, there uh, there are uh, use of medicines which uh, we call immunosuppressives which will uh, suppress your immune system so that you don't fight the kidney that has been put uh, inside your body from another person right so there are so very old people say person who's 70 years old he would rather do better on dialysis than take the load of these uh, surgery as well as the load of the medicines they can uh, come to the immunosuppression so elderly are generally not uh, kept for a transplant then patients who have very poor hearts you know uh, sometimes a patient is a diabetic has a weak heart as well as failed kidney so if his heart is functioning say anything below 20% we tend to not put them for surgery because then uh, you know they are uh, high risk for surgery and they may not sustain surgery so then uh, uh, some patients do have cancers and treatment of cancers results in kidney failure or the cancer per se causes kidney failure so these are patients who cannot be taken for uh, uh, transplant because then the cancer tend to come up and spread all over the body but there are patients who, who have had full treatment for cancer and then after a certain wait time which is defined for various types of cancer 3 years 5 years if they are free of cancer even at that time then they can be taken up for kidney transplants 
so these are a few settings where uh, one would not go for a transplant but general belief is diabetics have a high risk no diabetics who otherwise have a reasonably good heart are as good as non diabetics for kidney transplant thank you for highlighting that sir so as we have seen that uh, kidneys uh, regarding you know all different organs that are uh, okay for transplanting kidneys have the largest amount of research uh, kidney transplants so there are many advanced technologies that we have heard that are going on uh, and being used in developed countries such as um, robotic transplants and different methods such as home dialysis uh, equipments as well as uh, research is going on on xeno transplants so can you please touch a little bit for our audience to understand what these three different things are and how adaptable and usable is this technology in india in the current time right <clears throat> so first i would uh, focus on home dialysis you know what is believed is uh, that if you have to travel to a dialysis center in a hospital you are exposed to you know large number of patients in the same uh, room and so you tend to develop uh, get like covid you know lo large number of dialysis patients develop covid because one of them had covid and in the dialysis unit it spread to everybody so that was the time we were pushing patients for home dialysis home dialysis is easily done in india right the only thing we do is that we tell the patient that look you come for uh, hemodialysis first to the hospital for a few weeks once you are uh, we find that you can tolerate the procedure well we put the same type of machine and unit at home it's not costly then uh, there is another type of dialysis which is called the peritoneal dialysis which is con continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis in which we put a catheter inside the abdomen and this can be done at home totally by the patient himself or with the help of relatives it doesn't involve the use of blood so peritoneal dialysis is one thing which can be done at home home dialysis has its advantages and therefore and it is available in india this you should be clear right then the you asked about robotic transplant you know robot doesn't do anything it's the man behind the robot which who operates the robot the only thing is robots are precise so the cut that you want to give in your mind is actually given in the body of the patient uh, there is no shaking of your hand you know so it gives you quicker hospital discharge less blood loss and um, smaller incision so these are three advantages of robotic surgery then the third thing you asked is xeno transplant you know pigs have been found to be closest to humans genomic wise not chimpanzees or baboons right so the pig kidneys are being uh, tried but there are a host of problems and uh, in brief i would say there is a immense difference in the immune uh, uh, response to pig kidneys versus human kidneys so human to human is better pigs to humans the immune system tends to destroy the there are host of uh, viruses which have got incorporated over centuries in the genome of the pig in the genetic material of the pig like the hiv what came from monkeys right because humans consumed monkeys same with the covid it is believed i don't know what is truth but there are host of diseases which are not from viruses which are not troubling the pigs but once they enter human body they can create havoc right so these are three limitations of uh, xeno transplant progress is being made and rapid research so what they are doing is they are now producing humanized pigs so the gen genetic material is closer to humans than the actual pigs and they are being um, worked at some other animals are also being looked at but pigs probably would be the first uh, xeno transplant that we can see
Thank you so much, sir, for explicitly explaining all these different terminologies are, that are there and the different uh, methods that we might have in future for the treatment of kidney diseases. So uh, coming on to managing kidney diseases and preventing them from an early stage onwards, what would be that you suggest is the need of the hour for people to follow your recommendations on keeping kidney healthy? Uh, I am sure you see so many many people coming up to you with various kidney diseases and the number has been increasing to now people getting it, kidney diseases at a very early stages as well. So how can we avoid through a preventive and a healthy lifestyle? What tips would you recommend? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the same thing as you would say for diabetes, hypertension and kidney diseases are also lifestyle diseases, bulk of them. So, uh, I would say uh, uh, body weight, if you include regular exercise, if you take balanced diet, if you quit smoking or don't smoke, quit alcohol or leave alcohol if you are already taking, this would go along. You must take two and a half liters of water on an average. Of course, if you are working in uh, uh, high heat conditions, then you have to appropriately increase your uh, um, liquid intake. Bulk of us are uh, in the big cities are, uh, you know, sitting and working in air and offices, so I get stimulated. So we end up taking only one liter of water, right? So you must ensure that at least two, two and a half what you uh, must so then don't take unnecessary medicines and don't take uh, 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 over the counter medicines without uh, the advice of uh, a physician or a doctor right most doctors know what is good for your kidney and what is not good for your kidney fourthly if you have a family history of kidney disease uh, please go for an annual checkup the kidney diseases are picked up by two simple tests. One is a urine routine, which will cost you 100 rupees, and a blood creatinine, which will also cost you another 100 rupees. So if you have a kidney disease, annual urine and blood test must be done. If you have a diabetes uh, family history, then get your annual sugars done, and so on and so forth. So you must, uh, prevention is, if you pick uh, early, Otherwise, there is no prevention. So besides healthy lifestyle, if you have a family history, please screen your, uh, uh, go for annual medical checkups and pick it up early. Thank you so much, sir. With that, we come to the end of the show. I would like to thank Dr. Sanjeev Saxena for taking out time from his busy schedule and imparting us with a wealth of knowledge and information around this topic. I would also like to thank our partner in the activity, JB Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals, for partnering with us and for uh, creating awareness on this very timely topic of kidney health. Thank you so much to all our viewers for staying with us till the very end. And I hope you got a wealth of information out of this episode. Thank you so much. Have a nice thank day. You. Thank you.